The great thing about Pennsylvania is that you don't have to try too hard to catch brook trout. Across a lot of the state, you can park along the side of the road and have access to miles of pristine water within a short walking distance. But in some cases, if you put in a little extra effort and get off the beaten path, you can discover your own private water that may even hold that trophy brook trout of a lifetime. We are in the process of gearing up right now for a backpacking trip, a 42 mile backpacking trip to be exact, in north central Pennsylvania on the Black Forest Trail. Uh, one of the goals of this trip, we're going to try and hit up some of these really remote brook trout streams in hopes of maybe getting into some, some unpressured areas and get a real nice brook trout or maybe just a lot of brook trout. So. Tomorrow, uh, it's going to be our first day, and we, it's going to be probably a two and a half, three day hike. So it should be a really good time. All right, so we are really tired. It's 1030 right now. We're ready to hit the, hit the hay here. But real quick, we wanted to just map things out a little bit. We are going to be starting at uh, the Hotel Manor. We're going to do about 20 miles or so on the first day. Uh, and then we're shooting for uh, what did we say, Doug? Like 16 miles on, on day two. And then uh, we're just going to finish it off from there. So that's our loose itinerary. Obviously things happen when you're out on the trail. But we're going to shoot for that. Um, and it should be good for tomorrow. So we have arrived at the trailhead finally. We are here on Slate Run Road, right above the Hotel Manor, and we are about to step off on the trail. Alright, so as far as navigation goes, I am most certainly not in charge because I'm just, I'm not a navigation guy. I wish I was. I almost failed navigation when I was at Fort Knox last summer for ROTC training. Uh, so Doug is definitely going to be in charge of navigation. Can't spell lost without LT, right? This is the first creek crossing. We got to take our shoes off. Dan's just going barefoot. I'm going to wear Crocs, I think. I'm going to watch him first, see how he does. That is so cool. So we're walking down the trail kind of preoccupied by a sign up there. And we look at this right here, this fast water, and we're like, well, looks like we might get swept away trying to cross. And then we look to our left. Wouldn't you, ha wouldn't you know it? Nice break. We're about to eat here. We figured this place where the bridge was, it's the last water for some time, so we're like, you know what, let's fill up our bottles, we'll eat lunch here too, because it's beautiful, and uh, then we'll hit the trail again. This is, this is our heavy day. We're gonna do a lot of walking today, so then the other two days we can take it easy a little bit more.
I'm ready to get to camp. It's been a long, a long 20 miles. Alrighty, so we just got to, we just got to our campsite a little bit ago and the first thing we did was actually just sit down on those rocks right there. Someone made some little chairs. We're exhausted. Uh, we did about 21, 22 miles today. So the fishing tonight, probably not gonna happen. Maybe we'll try and fish this stream right here, but I mean, we'll, we'll play it by year. I think today was, we're gonna put the miles on tomorrow. We're gonna be doing a little bit more fishing in some of these uh, streams that are supposed to have better brook trout and brown trout populations. Right now, Emily's making some supper for us. She's getting the water started and we'll all make our, our ramen and chicken. Dan just filtered the water. I was getting the tent out. So we got a pretty smooth operation going here. We are just wrapping up the night here. We have all of the socks and the shoes that got wet today on all the stream crossings. They're drying right now. I'm making some tea. We're gonna have some tea and it is 7.47. I really don't think we will be up all that much longer because we are beat. And we got a long day ahead of us again tomorrow. So we'll see you in the morning. so cold <laughs> but we gotta move it's 5:40. none of us slept well here we go ready for the sound that everyone dreads when backpacking <laughs> and the mat is now deflated we just woke up it's absolutely freezing probably low 40s at least from what I saw in the extended forecast, and we're down on a dip here. But a nice warm breakfast of oatmeal, and we're gonna have some Roth Rock coffee. It's gonna make it all better before we hit the trail. Our feet are sore, so we're gonna take it a lot slower today. We've done a, a decent uh, chunk of trail five or six. Yeah, I'd say five or six. And we are about to descend here down into Callahan Run. Got a nice vista up here, grab some pictures. And we're hurting a little bit right now. Doug, we patched his feet up earlier. And I'm having some IT band issues. Uh, so I'm pretty tight. But we're just gonna keep moving, try and get the, the miles in so we can do some fishing. So. Spotted. We're gonna go down, throw something on, see if we can't catch a brook trout. Let's go do it. Dan just hooked a really nice brook trout, like right in there. And I'm talking, that thing had to have been 10 inches. Beautiful, beautiful fish. We know that this hole is definitely holding some fish. We just don't know if we spooked them, you know, 
or what's going on, but we may have put down the hole, unfortunately. And we gotta make good time, so I don't think we can spend too much time here. like one more cast. I was just working that opposite bank, but we want to get into camp or we're even debating just calling it and just finishing out the trail. So let's see if we can catch one more fish in here. two more casts. I'm telling you, there's there's just a seam over there that I think those fish are just kind of stacked in. They're just sitting in there waiting to see what comes out of that waterfall. And it's a Frenchie coming at them. Oh, ho, ho. Okay. I don't know where my hat is. I just got it. Oh crap! Oh, I almost got stuck on that wall. This is some stress responsible here. Cookie cutter, they're all kind of this size except for that first one. There he goes. Alright, let's keep moving down the trail here. We gotta get to camp. Well, as you can see, we used my hat, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that the waterfall was right behind me there. We got a cross right there. And then going up and down another creek. We might fish that a little bit. We're gonna see what the time is, like Dan was saying. Play it by ear. All right, so a few feet up. Come up here, we're gonna reenact what just happened. Don't even, Dan. I'm not going close, don't worry. I ain't going close to that thing. So we're walking along. We're just chatting away. 
And oh my God. And then we just started running back. I was about five feet away from that thing. And it scared the living daylights out of me. I'm still shaking a little bit. Whew. Always neat to see though. There he is. That sure does make it worth it though. Views like that. Yeah. Huge vistas all over the place. Scenic waterfalls and streams. I mean, this trail is brutal. Absolutely brutal with the the uphill climbs and the descents, uphill climb and descents, one after the other for miles and miles and miles. But whenever you see stuff like this, it makes it all worth it, no doubt. There's some pretty special places on this trail. All right, so we descended down into the next ravine here, the next hollow where we have a stream. The trail parallels that stream going up. So we're gonna fish this up and then we're gonna climb out and basically try and finish tonight. We got about eight miles left to go. But uh, should be some good holes going up through here. The stream looks promising from what we're seeing. So, uh, I mean, we'll see what we hook into. Out on another stream in the Black Forest. At this point in the trip, things started to get a little bit rough. Once we were done fishing on uh, this second stream here, it was by this point close to six o'clock. We had uh, eating our supper, we were actually running a little bit low on food. We didn't intend to be burning as many, many calories that we were, so we were eating more. We were running a little bit low. We had decided we're going to try and get that eight miles in and figured we're probably going to be finishing just around dark, maybe a little bit after. So we're hiking back up this mountain, not feeling real great because we're just beat. And then we get on this flat stretch, and by this point, it's almost 8.30. And there is one more descent and climb that we had to do in this really overgrown hemlock area. We start going down in about at the bottom. It's about 9 o'clock, so it's dark, especially going up out. Hemlock's over top. By the time we're at the top of this thing, we can barely see the blaze marks. So we have to break out the flashlights, break out the headlamps. And we have just a short distance left to go before the final 
descent and back to the car where we're going to hit the road. So as we're walking across the top, we start going down and we have one of the biggest scares of the entire trip. Uh, it's pretty quiet. We're all kind of just walking. Luckily, we had a full moon, so a lot of a lot of visibility. But then out of nowhere, we just hear that classic sound of a rattlesnake going off at 9.30 at night. And it was pretty close. So we were pretty, pretty freaked out with that. We never did see the snake. We kind of gave it, uh, gave that area a pretty wide berth, uh, went around it. Luckily, no one got hurt, no one tripped or anything. We uh, made our way down uh, this mountain here and finally got back to the car. And it really, it was uh, an absolutely uh, interesting experience. We look back on it with just such an awesome memory. Our feet were hurt and we were sore, but it's definitely something that we'll never forget. Uh, I hope that by watching this video, you guys can kind of share in our experience uh, of the hiking and the fishing and just everything that goes along with it. It really is an amazing trail, so if you ever get a chance to do it, I definitely recommend it. I don't recommend doing it in two days. So we hope you enjoyed the video, found it entertaining, maybe even educational if you're planning on ever doing this trail. Uh, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And we will see you guys on one of the next episodes. We're going to be having some Montana videos coming up shortly.